back. This is the How to RPG channel, and before you, uh, you see Monster Box. You see Monster Box because this is the Monster Day, where I talk about Monster Lore. I'm going to talk about the Golem very shortly, but I just wanted to point you in the direction of some very good books. The Tome of Beasts for Kobold Press, the very first one. There is a second one and a third one as well. And Espers Emporium of Esoterica, which is probably about half this book is Monster Manual or Monster Information. So if you're interested in those sorts of things, great. But... AJ Pickett was nice enough to send me his Big Pockets Silicon Battle Mat, and uh, I, it's sitting on top of this right now, and it's kind of amazing. I haven't had a chance to have a really close look at it, but you're going to see a lot of it in the future. In any case, you're here for the Golem. I'm going to put up a poll, so grab some food, some drink, make sure you're relatively comfortable. Um, I have a lot to say about the, the Golem. I've taken a lot of time with regard to compiling this because there's so much information with regard to mythology but also with regard to role-playing games and the information that you get. So trying to put that all together into something that's cohesive is actually quite difficult. I'm finding this to be the case with a lot of the monsters nowadays. Um, I'm a little, Sorry I'm a little bit late today. Uh, I found myself in a little bit of an awkward situation where I could barely sort of speak. So... Hopefully I managed to last the entire um, entire um, hour, or two hours, should I say. In any case, let's get started, shall we? Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about role-playing games and the topic for today is the Golem. The Golem monster in, in terms of lore and the mythology and how you'd go about using it, like what can we tell you about it that you can use in your role-playing games but also in your Dungeons and Dragons games, Pathfinder, anything like that. So I've compiled as much information as I possibly can. The topics are, I've got some general information for you. I've got a bit on the biology which is going to be very short because it's pretty obvious why combat we're going to talk a little bit about combat i can't really talk about habitat ecology and society but i will explain that very shortly there's a little bit of theory here there's a bit of background information how to incorporate it into your adventures i'm going to discuss that how to defeat the golem and also some of the origins of the golem because it goes way way back so let's get started shall we so some general information on the golem to start off with the Golem is an artificially created uh, automation, and it's incredibly powerful. It's, it has a lot of power invested into it. The construction of a Golem involves mighty magic, elemental forces, and more often, divine power. Golems don't normally have the ability to speak a language and are very simple-minded. Now, the biology of a Golem well, golems don't have a, a biological anatomy because they are constructs. They are, they're basically a robot, so they don't have that sort of thing. The word of God is written on a shim or a piece of paper, and that shim is placed in the mouth of a golem, or it is inserted into the forehead of the golem, and what this does is it breathes life into the automation, into the golem itself. That is the, the process and sort of the structure of a golem. Now the body and form of a golem is normally sculpted from clay or from mud. Now the reason for this is molding in this material is much easier than any other material. But you can in fact mold or make a golem from any material if you have enough skill and the right information and the right amount of power. Elemental spirits can sometimes be trapped inside a constructed body to make a golem. But this is more difficult and it requires advanced magical knowledge. So you're probably thinking, so how does the actual golem itself have something in it that powers it and makes sure that it does something? Well, there's many different ways. Uh, and often this process is not necessarily meaning that there is a spirit of some kind in there. But if you look at it, there are certainly many versions of the golem that do have an elemental spirit or a unwilling spirit, or some sort of spirit involved, or some sort of breath of life. And I'll go into more detail very shortly. So combat with a golem. All golems share several traits in common. The standard attack for a golem is usually to strike with a limb, and this will probably be a fist if it's bipedal, and if it's a quadruped then it's going to be using one of its four limbs. But they don't always have that sort of structure to them. 
depending on the golem type, they tend to have special abilities, and one of the most common special abilities is a breath weapon that they use. Transformation magic can't change the shape of golem. Why? Because they are protected from arcane spells that would change their form in some way. So polymorphing a golem won't work. Golems are immune to all forms of poison, and they can't be affected by a hold spell, a charm spell, fear effects, or anything that affects the mind. If you have a spell that it will affect the mind, it won't affect a golem because it does not have a mind of its own. Uh, certain spells can harm a golem, and I'm going to mention these very shortly. Most golems are fearless, and they never suffer any kind of morale issues, so they don't run away. A golem does not have a habitat, it does not have a society, and it does not have an ecology. Uh, they are a construct, they are essentially a, a robot. So they don't have that sort of thing. That's not to say that you can't build one for yourself, you could certainly do that. But in terms of lore, and in terms of the role-playing aspect of this, there's really nothing out there. Now, background. Golems predate any known literature and documentation about their creation. And so you'll find a lot of the information on the golem falls into legend and mythology. Now, priests and sages and wizards, those that discover the process of creating golem are unknown. We don't actually know exactly who was the one who's found that particular information. But we, what we do know is the... The first individuals to do so were probably priests rather than a sage wizard or somebody who has power in the arcane um, magical forces. Some of the rediscovered golem uh, construction books have secrets and various and sort of uh, various uh, divine or arcane manuals, uh, and they usually have some sort of enchantment to aid the reader in the golem construction. So, if you have a, a golem manual or a golem book that assists you. Uh, and explain the process, there's usually something in the book that assists the person creating the golem and actually making the golem. Not just the instructions, but some sort of magical power or some sort of divine um, um, force. False rumours have suggested that the first golem created was actually the flesh golem, um, possibly an accident of some sort of great wizard experimenting with reanimating human bodies, but this is incorrect. Uh, this may well have been the first time that a wizard created a golem, but the chances are that this is uh, this is just a, a, folk, um, a folklore that has been passed on, but it's not really true. There were golems well before that. Uh, clay golems are the simplest to construct because the mud is easy to sculpt, and the word scribed on paper can be inserted into the mouth of a priest. Now one of the things you'll also notice is that priests have a less difficulty creating a golem than a wizard. A wizard has to be quite powerful to be able to create a golem, whereas a priest or cleric does not. Unfortunately, the flesh golem is probably the easiest construct for a, a wizard to create. Uh, why? Because out of everything that they can make them from, um, the fact that the, the flesh golem is constructed by organic material that was once alive assists them in creating something that is now living, or at least moving. Whereas if it doesn't have, uh, if you have something that's completely inanimate and it was never alive, it's much harder for a wizard to actually bring that to life. One of the things you probably won't find is priests don't generally create flesh golems. Next, theory. Golems are all made from sort of elemental material or organic material, uh, but potentially can be made of any material, as I said. Since the spirit of a golem is not a natural part of its body, uh, it is not affected by spells or even by most weapons. So the actual spirit, not necessarily the, the golem itself, but part of that, particularly when there is a spirit trapped within or part of the golem itself, that does sort of imbue the golem with additional um, protection. The process of creating an arcane golem binds the unwilling spirit to an artificial body and enslaves it to the will of the golem's creator. Now the nature of the spirit inside the golem is unknown when there is a spirit trapped within. Not all, not all golems, as I said, have a spirit trapped inside. And it has so far eluded the grasp of all researchers as to what's going on. 
What is known is that the golem spirit is hostile to all prime material plane life forms and unfortunately, well, probably not unfortunately, they are especially um, hostile towards the spellcaster or wizard who bound them to a golem body. They don't like it. Carving or assembling the golem's physical body is an exacting task. It's quite difficult. Most spellcasters end up hiring a skilled labourer or um, craftsman to do this for them because, you know, something like a stonemason uh, might be better to actually create a stone golem or a dwarf who's um, familiar with moving and shaping stone and rock. Um, if the maker of the golem has no experience in the material, then the construction time is doubled and the const construct or golem shape and form won't be very good. Standard spells for creating golems specify the size of the creature. And if you go beyond the specified size for a golem uh, of a particular type with the spells that you're using, uh, it gets very, very difficult. It's, it's, in fact, almost impossible in some cases. The rituals used to animate a golem require as much as a, a full, uninterrupted, full, uninterrupted month. So you have to spend an entire month to complete the task. There are some variants that have a reduced time frame, but they're usually, they're usually quite small, and uh, there's only specific ones. I'm not going to go into all those because there's too many. In the, all cases, um, spells used to create a golem can come from a device, uh, such as a wand or a scroll or a rod. Any of those sorts of things could potentially create a golem. Now, if, and I mentioned this before, if a magical tome or book is used to make the golem, no spells are needed and the level of the spell caster can be significantly lower to create that golem. This is when you're using a golem manual. How do you incorporate the golem into your adventure? Now, a lot of these ideas have been taken from the Game Master Roundtable. I'm not going to go over the people who specifically were there, um, but I want to thank them because they had some great ideas. I'm trying not to re reproduce a lot of the ideas that already exist in, on the internet and uh, in, the, in the community, so these are hopefully a little bit different. So what about a city or civilization that is dependent on golems for everyday life? This is kind of like duplicating the movie iRobot in some, some respects. You could have a, a Dio uh, or a genie who wages war against golems that have an, an elemental spirit trapped inside, attempting to release them and free them from their bondage so that they can return to their normal uh, habitat or normal plane of existence. The pillow golem that disguises itself as a pillow then slaps and suffocates its victims. Now this idea is actually presented by Esper the Bard. He, ha he actually has a monster that he's built for this, he, just not ha he hasn't released it yet. Hopefully he does. We have the plush golem that looks like a giant teddy bear that smothers children when they get too close. <laughs> we, now I know that sounds sick. But also the thing to remember too with a golem you could have an animal shape for a golem. It doesn't need to have a humanoid form. It doesn't have to be bipedal. It could be a quadruped. It could literally look like another animal. You can have the paper golem that protects, say, a library and attacks uh, any intruders with paper cuts to make things a little bit more interesting. You could have a, a cotton candy golem that glues its victims in place. And the only way, way to actually defeat the cotton candy golem is to eat your way to its destruction. <laughs> Maybe that takes a little while. Maybe you need a bit of help. You could have an old quilt golem made of blankets that flaps um, people with uh, its blankets, uh, the tips or corners of its blankets, and then tries to smother them. You could have a candlestick golem that burns down to a stump. I'm, this is very much a... Now, this idea was presented by AJ Pickett, and it feels very Disney. Um, so anybody who remembers... Beauty and the Beast will probably be familiar with the candlestick that sort of uh, moved around. It's not really a, a golem in that movie, but it's a, it's a cool idea. You could have factory workers that are golems because they don't need to drink, they don't need to eat, they don't need to breathe, they don't sleep, they don't need, to, they don't complain, they don't need to rest, and they will not join a union and they can't strike because they don't join join a union. They don't have free will, so you can kind of do whatever you like. Uh, this could all have all sorts of ramifications because now you can turn that on its end and say, okay, well, now that we've got this, now we, there's one that's different to everybody else. All the other golems work one way, but this one golem works slightly differently. And this, again, sort of goes back a little bit to iRobot. 
um, but I'm taking it from a different angle in that the golems are actually the factory workers. You could have an, an army of uh, golems that are troopers used in a war, and for those of you who are familiar with uh, something like the Terminator, this is probably a good example, are robots, and then you've also got uh, something like the Warforge from Dungeons and Dragons. The treasure golem is one of my favorites. Uh, this is where you have a, a golem constructed from the actual treasure that it's protecting. And you might place this treasure golem uh, in, a, in a lair for a dragon or in a, a great um, treasure vault of some kind. You can have the nano golem that is a microscopic assassination tool that can get right inside somebody's body and do all sorts of horrible things. You could have a sword stuck into the back or body of a stone golem uh, that's, you know, it's, uh, it's partly damaged the, the golem, but it's still wandering around and functioning. So if you want that, uh, that sword, it's probably magical, you're going to have to pull it out. So these are a lot of ideas, as I said, that I came from the Game Master Roundtable, and I do want to thank them. Thank you, Josiah, Wally, um, AJ Pickett, and Esper. Okay. How to defeat your golem? Your players are going to need to know how to do this. So as long as you as the game master know how this works, then hopefully your players will also understand this. You can remove the shem. This is the piece of paper that has the word of God written on it that's placed inside the mouth of the golem. Sometimes it can be a little tablet or a little um, uh, chit, and this will deactivate the construct by removing that shem. You can also dispel the golem's magic that, it, that, uh, that created it. This can be very effective, uh, some golems can only be deacti deactivated with Dispel Magic for a short period of time, some permanently. You could release the elemental spirit, however that might be done, that is trapped within the golem, and of course as soon as the spirit leaves the golem's body, it will shut down because that's what was actually giving the golem movement and, uh, and life. Only enchanted or magical weapons are generally capable of dam dam damaging a golem. So if you want to actually do any harm to a golem, you probably need to use enchantment or magical weapons. Uh, the other thing is gaining the possession of the golem's control device. There's usually a, an amulet, a, a crystal, a rod or something, maybe even a coin, that controls the golem. Uh, there might even be a, a, sp a particular... A command word but often there's a device and as long as you have the device it will perform whatever task the uh, instructor gives them. The last thing is golems are often protected from magic so you have to be very careful about the types of spells that you use against it and because all golems are slightly different I mean you get can get a huge wide variety of them that means there is no definitive, these sorts of spells will work or won't work. So you have to be careful about using magic on them. If you're going to blast them in a certain way, if it doesn't work the first time, you probably don't want to keep trying the same thing. Try something else. The origins of the golem. A golem is an animated anthropo anthropomorphic uh, being. Now this is, the golem comes from Jewish folklore, which created an inanimate, an inanimate uh, matter and this was clay or mud. So the original golem is from Jewish folklore, and it was made from clay or mud. Now, why clay or mud? Because clay or mud is cheap, it's easy to access, and it's easy to sculpt and mold. The classic story of the golem of Prague uh, was created by that was created by a rabbi to defend the Jewish people in Prague's ghettos from anti-Semitic uh, attacks and the Romans as well from attack. Is quite famous. This, I mean, whether you believe it actually happened or whether it's mythology or legend to you, uh, it's probably one of the most um, interesting stories about the golem that I've ever come across. Some accounts of the golem of Prague state that it performed manual labor rather than trying to protect the uh, the Jewish people. But um, there are also tales that say that the golem fell in love and then um, through, you know, became jealous and, uh, and, and caused problems. There's even um, tales of the, the Golem of Prague going on a murderous rampage. Now, no definitive information about this seems to sort of indicate one way or the other, because there's lots of different stories. And like mythology, there's always a twist from somebody somewhere along the line. So it's not completely clear. There's lots of different conflicting information. Now, I really hope that this information was useful to you. You'll find a way to use it in your game, for your role-playing game. 
And uh, hey, I want to thank my patrons who support me on Patreon. I want to thank you for watching. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. All right, let's zip on over and let's see what we've got today. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, usually once I've covered a particular topic at the beginning, I then transition over to the workshop aspect of uh, monster creation. And I'm going to be doing that very, very shortly. Hopefully I was, uh, so I'm still, su I, I suffer so for those of you who don't understand um, why I sometimes struggle to say something during my live streams or when I do a presentation, I have a lot of things going on in my my throat and my um, my mouth and my stomach, and it causes all sorts of problems for me. So it's very hard sometimes for me to get things out and be coherent. Even and, and the fact that I'm doing a live stream makes it more difficult. It's one of the reasons why I've given up on doing edited videos where I will record me saying the same thing over and over again. One, because I never found it actually solved my problems in the slightest. So now I just go with, I just do the best I can the first time around. Okay. Anyway, what do we got here? If Hubba, hello. Frankenstein's monster, the monster, the original flesh golem. Yes, now... For those of you who are unaware, I believe, now I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I understand that Esper and a couple of others who I was talking to did, did mention that, um, that uh, the Frankenstein, the story of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster, look, it was probably the inspiration for the first flesh golem uh, in terms of role-playing games and uh, mythology, okay? That's where the idea came from. But the idea of the golem full stop goes way back to um, Jewish, Jewish um, folklore, okay? Hello, Michael. Michael is a patron. How are you doing? Uh, Overlord of Midgard. Hello. How, welcome to the live stream. Last golem we fought was a, a flesh golem in the Abbey from the Curse of Strat. I know the flesh golem you're talking about. Yep, I remember that. Uh, pillow golem sounds like a mimic variant. It's kind of like a, a, a mimic variant, but it, it's also made of pillows. Uh, and you can see so the, the <laughs> I'm not going to go into too much detail because this is something that Esper the Bard has not released to the public yet. But um, I do believe that it can be made up of multiple pillows, not just one. So it can pull itself together into multiple pillows and, and whack a doodle on you. Hello, Dungeons and Chronics. How are you doing? Hello, JP. How are you doing, mate? Um, I recall the Dwarf Stone Golem in the Temple of Howling Hatred, yeah. Uh, Princes of the Apocalypse almost killed our entire party, TPK. Yeah, it was not... <laughs> yeah, Golems are insanely strong. They're supposed to be. But I mean, also too, Golems are usually pretty easy to escape. They usually don't chase after you, you know. They, they'll just leave you alone and go back to protecting their, whatever they're protecting. In any case... Um, I've done enough chatter for today and we're going to get on to the task of actually making and building some stuff. So let me grab my phone, get that set up. And, uh, for those of you who are aware, we've already made a lot of monster tools, uh, things that allow you to make your own stuff. And we've already made monster motivations as a table, 100 monster motivations that's up on Patreon now. Um, and you can, uh, look, I don't think, I don't have tears on, on, on Patreon. So you'll find all the information for the, um, the the golem today will go up onto Patreon, hopefully at the end of the week, but it will be there. Um, we'll make sure it goes up onto Patreon. So if you want it in a document, you'll get it. Uh, we've done um, monster body parts. We've done um, monster origins. We did a table for monster origins. And I think there's about 20, 24 different monster origins that we put together. I don't think it's a huge table, but it's certainly very useful. And there's a couple of other things too. Uh, that's right, monster traits. So if you want to make your own monster, the mechanics and the sort of special abilities, we have monster traits that work all the time and we have monster special abilities. And both of those are 100 different options. So going down that route, we have been working on building 100 different animals and when you use now this is going right back to dungeons and dragons um advanced dungeons and dragons where you 
you take uh, a, a variety of different animals and you use them as a way of building things out. And so what I'll do is I'll just get my phone working so I can see the chat while I'm doing this. And we should be just about ready to go. Okay, all right. So I can see the chat is coming through and hopefully I'm up to date. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's move over to my workstation. Oh, there we go. Well, that, that was quick, that was easy. Sweet, okay, this is what we've been working on for those of you who are unaware. We've been working on land-based animals as a 100 table. Now we've got quite a way through, so I'll, I'll show you so far, trying to make sure we get something that is this completely different. So far, I think we're up to about 70 different animals, 72. Trying to not to re reproduce the same things is difficult. Um, and I've been using a website to sort of help that process. <laughs> the adamantian ancient dragon golem <laughs> right so hashtag what is a land animal we don't have don't have that can that can be used to make a monster. So the idea being, and I've presented this concept before in the past as a live stream, and now we're just building the tools to do that, is that land-based animals would have for like a, um, you'd, do, you'd roll four times for a bipedal, and you'd roll three times for a quadruped. And each time, the first one would be the head, then the body, then the legs and arms for the, the bipedal. And for the land-based quadruped, it would be head, body, legs. And so by using different animal parts of the animals that we select, we get our new monster. This is very much what Advanced Dungeons & Dragons did for many, many years. And so that's what we're trying to duplicate here. We get, we've already done the subterranean. I haven't been able to finish it off. I need three more, I think, before I can kind of na nail that one down. But we're getting closer. Uh, we'll do marine animals and we'll do flying animals some of the time. And then once we've done that, we'll be moving on to some other suggestions that AJ Pickett had um, um, put forward and uh, building those out as well. Now, <laughs> uh, th there's a lot to do today. So I'm going to, I've done W to Z and this is the website that I've been using. So I want to grab this now. And we will we'll see. I don't. I'm really trying hard not to duplicate things we've done before, people. So, if there's something we've already done, we'll try to leave it alone. You know, there's different types of snakes. We don't have to do every different type of snake. We just say snake. So da da da. da. Scroll on down till I get to the right place. No 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 no. no. I think because we it was getting harder and harder to do this, so this is why I started to revert to this um this way. So we've done W to Z, I believe. Oops. Okay. Yeah, we've done W to Z, so we're moving on from there, and so we'll be doing V and U in a second. What do you got here, um, Fred? The Bora beetle. Um, normally bore into dying trees, make um variant bores living. I think the Bora beetle is just another beetle. I, I'm pretty sure I have already listed down beetle under B. And if, if the beetle is a beetle, like I'm not sure there's much point in adding it. Another beetle on. Beetles are beetles, aren't they? If we've got a beetle that doesn't fly, yeah. Okay, Bora. What does it look like? Bora beetle. Um... Bora beetle, Bora beetle, Bora beetle. I, I don't know. I think we're going to just leave the Bora beetle. I don't really want to put more beetles in there. We've got an excited... Um, Amelia's very excited today. I can hear. She's obviously having a good day. It's a Tuesday for her. Tuesday for me in New Zealand. So Tuesdays are usually the fun day. They get to do all sorts of things. Okay, right. Let's have a look at what we got here. Valley Bulldog. We've got a dog. A squid is for the marine, so we'll leave that. We've done the Velociraptor. I'm pretty sure I added the Velociraptor. We were adding all sorts of dinosaurs. I'm going to suggest some extinct animals. If you can find some extinct animals that lived on the land, 
Maybe that's a good idea as well. Yeah, we got the Velociraptor. Thought so. Uh, we've got Monkey. I think we've got Ape. We've got a bunch of those sort of things. Yeah, I don't think we need that one. What's this? There is a kind of mole that turns insects into sort of zombies that climb. So when they die and pop. What? Oh, pop spores. Spread wide. Okay, all right. I, well, that's something new. We're going to learn a lot today. We've got the boa and the snake. The snake is already the same sort. A gecko, there's a lizard. A vole just feels like... And a vole's just another another um, guinea pig or a rat, isn't it? Basically, or mouse. I don't think there's much point in adding that. The vole. We're not going to get any significant differentiation. Bat, it's flying. We'll leave that alone. What is this thing, though? So now, somebody had said they wanted me to add in the Venus flytrap. And I had left it off. I remember somebody had mentioned it. I can't remember who it was. I'm taking the hat off. Um, but it's it's actually here. Much to my surprise. And so I am tempted to add the Venus flytrap. Why is it indicated that the Venus flytrap is an animal? Because this is lists of animals. Uh, the oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sea. It's a marine creature. So we're not going to worry about that one. Okay. W da, 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 no, no, no. Okay. So, why the Venus flytrap? Because I wouldn't have considered that. The mold is a a cordyceps. Oh, you're saying mold is an animal? Because I put down virus, didn't I? I put down virus, which complicates things. Because when you're finding body parts for something, um, mold. Mold is a fungal growth that forms and spreads on various kinds of damp or decaying organic matter. There are many different mold species that come in many different colours. Molds are sometimes referred to as mildew. They are found both indoors and outdoors in climates. It's a fungus. Is a fungus a land-based living creature? I'm just thinking, well, it's plant, isn't it? Okay, so what I'm going to do here, Fred, is I'm going to put down mold with a question mark. I'm starting to see your point a little bit, but I'm not sold. Um, but I, I'm starting to understand what you're you're trying to get at here. Mold. Um, sometimes. Let's do that. Let's do mold. And then I was going to go back to this Venus flytrap thing. Venus flytrap. What's the de <sighs> Venus flytrap is among is a a group of plants that consumes animals. So why do they put that down? The Venus flytrap. Is there enough biological um, stuff going on there that is going to work for us? That's the, I think that's the biggest problem, right? I'm going to put it at a question mark. Okay. I would like to find something else rather than using that, but um, I'll put it down as a Venus Venus flytrap. It just it just seems a little weird why we would put it down. I'm just I'm just I'm still not sold on the idea, but it's uh it's marked down for now. I drink some water. I'm going to need some a lozenger, I think. For those of you who are wondering, it's it's a real tough task now trying to find this. I now understand why nobody's done 100 different land animals. <laughs> it's so difficult. Okay. A bumblebee is a flying creature. We're not going to do um, flying creatures. We're not doing fish. Oh, God, good Lord. This channel, oh, this website's going to pain. Vein, what is that? Uh, what the heck is that? A vine garros. A vine garros? Okay, I need a I need a, a better picture. I need to know what this thing is because this is that was just funky ass. Let's uh let's see. 
Oh, Avon Garros. It's an arachnid, an older compromised vertebrae. But this arachnid looks a little different, doesn't it? Um, an arachnid order comprising invertebrates commonly known as whip scorpions or vine gorons. Often, oh, hang on, did we have, no, I know we put under subterranean scorpion, but we could add scorpion to this list, couldn't we? Land, not in the sea, doesn't fly. Let's add scorpion. There, there we go. We've got another one. Scorpion. All right. Um, fly trap is on the plant side of um, crossover from plants to animals. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It sort of falls into the same realm of um, the mold, you know, the concept of uh, using mold. So I don't feel like mold is a... Is an animal, I feel like it's a plant. Um, so is a vine gross different enough in terms of its auto um, an anatomy to actually consider it? Well, it is, isn't it? Its tail, it's different. Its pincers are a little different as well. As well. It's going to cause all sorts of problems for people to figure out what the heck that is. It's kind of part spider, part... So how many legs does it have? One, two, three. It has three, three legs. It looks horrible. Okay, fine. It's not quite, it's not quite a, um, a scorpion, but it's, um, it's got something similar to it. So let's go copy... And vine gross. Uh, there, 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 vine. I think it'll go there. So I, I now run into the problem of I will definitely have to write out a description of each of these little creatures because they're just so complicated. <laughs> they're not they're not standard creatures, right? You don't usually come across them all the time. Hello, Brian Murray. How are you? Um, how about a much larger version of the silverfish, like the size of a dog? Well, we can always make anything that we've got here, whether an insect or not, um, larger. I think somebody had put down silverfish to be before, and, um, ah, silverfish. Um, silverfish is kind of like an earwig, isn't it? Silverfish. I think we've got, uh, what is it? We had tick. Caterpillar, centipede. Um, yeah, there's a few here. Okay. Stick insect, fine grass. Okay, all right. Let me let me percolate percolate on that, um, um, Brian. Uh, JP, Fred. Technically, a Venus flytrap is a plant. That's I know that. That's why I put a question mark. And not an animal. Does that that still make your list? I don't really think it does. If anything, it's probably coming off. I like the mold because I'm pretty sure mold is a plant as well. Et. Hello, Fred. And all. How about a mythological animals? Um, maybe a chip. Oh, we could use mythological animals. The only reason I don't want to use mythological animals, um, et, is uh, I feel like a mythological animal is a monster we want to use in our role playing games already. We don't have to do anything else with it because there's if we looked at in the global cultures and all the different monsters that they come up over the years, there's many different monsters, right? But I feel like that's already, people are already going to want to use those, depending on where you are in the world or what you, what influence you want to have. So I'm trying very hard to sort of keep the list. Actually, I'm just going to take the Venus flytrap out. Um, just keep the list to animals that actually existed and animals that 
you know, do exist. And I think I just want to be able to make sure that I give you guys as much variety as possible. So you're getting bang for your buck. Okay, so that's pushed our stuff back a little bit, but we we do we've moved forward a couple more. So I'll just keep working along. You keep throwing your ideas out there, and I'll snap up what I can. Um, what is this? That's a dog. We've got dog already. Oh, that's another dog. There's a lot of dogs in here. Where where did I go? Oh, don't tell me it's just gone all the way. Why you 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 w w w? Okay. Um, vampire crab, we've got crab already. I don't know what that is. A fly catcher. What is that? Oh, that's a bird. Um, what's the fly catcher? It's a bird as well, should have guessed. Uh, that's going to be a little bit frustrating if it keeps kicking me back this way. A viper, that's a snake. A viper fish, that's a fish, not using that one. A volcano snail. Snail. Do we put snail down? Vulture flies, so we're not adding that. Do we put snail in here? Near yeah, we did. We did. Of course we did. Of course we put snail in here. Um, I don't know. Vulture, no. This. What's this one here? It looks like a, a lemur. It looks like a lemur. And I think we had lemur down on our list. This is going to be frustrating as um l yep that's a lemur we'll leave that okay all right we we have not been defeated yet so out of v we got a couple out of u squirrel well i think i'm pretty sure we've got squirrel on there already uh that's some sort of monkey so we're not going to put down a monkey it's just a monkey with a red face, basically. And we I think we had sloth. Didn't we have sloth already and and squirrel? Sloth and squirrel, I'm pretty sure, on here. Sloth. Squirrel. Okay. So we're, we're, we got them. That's good. Um, don't need an owl because it's flying. We don't need another lizard. We've got lizards already. Uh, what the heck is that? Well, it's a moth. We're not doing a moth. That's a flying thing. Oh, that's a fish. You. Don't know what that is. Oh, it's some sort of dinosaur. Uh, it was an, an exceptionally large, an exceptionally ugly ungrelat that lives during the... Okay. All right, so it's a dinosaur. It's not even really clear what it looks like. It kind of looks a bit like a... Let's get a picture. What does this look like? Um, let's see if we can find a picture of this. Oh, it's kind of part. It's kind. It feels like it's part rhino, part hippo. Part elephant, but the head is very different. The legs and body are very similar. But good lord, is it look strange in the front? We're going to add that. I think we should add it. Let's add it to the list. An extinct creature? Why not? All right. So I just made this significantly harder for myself by having um, things that uh, don't exist anymore. <laughs> and who's going to know what the heck that is? So I have to provide a, a description of it at some point. But that moved us off forward a bit more. Um, no, no, that's a fish, that's a snake. Do you have a uh, chameleon? Chameleon's just another lizard though, dude, isn't it? I'm pretty sure chameleon's just a lizard. Cam. Uh, Millenian. Is that how you... Cam chameleon? Is it chameleon or is it chameleon? Chameleon. 
Have I spelt it right, or have you spelt it right? Is there one L in here? It's just a lizard. Lizards all look pretty much the same. I don't think there's much point putting it in. I think that's what you mean as a chameleon, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You. Okay, so let's um, let's keep going. Um, yeah, it's a bird. No good to me. Ridiculous name. Uh, that's an umbrella bird. Well, that's not sand sandpaper. What's a land? What's upland sandpiper? Feels like a bird to me. A sandpiper sound. Yeah, it's a bird. A sandpiper is a bird. Earl. What's an earl? So JP, you've you've given me this creature. Is it look different enough from an ape or a uh, a monkey that it's worth putting on the list? Because if it's not really, there's I don't really know if there's much point. Let's have a look. Irukari, yeah, I came across this before. It just looks like an orangutan. It just looks like a hairy monkey. I mean, we could add we could add um, a gazillion different um, monkey variations, but it's still monkey, isn't it? I'm going to leave it alone, okay? All right. Um, you didn't know the spelling? It's all right. I figured it out. Now, did I say? Did I click on Earl? Earl is. Oh, so didn't mean to, we we had sheep. I'm pretty sure I added sheep because I was like, oh, I'm from New Zealand. We should have sheep here. Yeah, we got sheep. Just a, a different type of sheep. What's this? That's a dog. That's just a dog. Okay. So U is done. Uh, v and U is done. And now we're into T. And T looks like it's going to take me a long, long, long time. So let's do this. Taco Terrier. Well, don't need a Terrier. It's a dog. Taipan. What's a Taipan? Do we got not rhinoceros? I'm pretty sure I put rhinoceros on there, dude. Yeah, there we go. Rhino rhinoceros is on on the list. Not so easy to find something that's fairly new and different from the rest. It's a snake. Yeah, we're not putting another snake down. TTT. Oh, I wish I would stop doing that. Um, Tamascan. Tamascan. Isn't that a dog? Yeah, it is. A Tamascan's a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, it's frustrating. Damascan. Um, that's an orangutan. It's a, it's a hawk. No. Um, Tarisia? What's a Tarisia? Red panda. A panda's just a, a, another bear. Panda, bear, that, that's like the same thing. I'm pretty sure we've got bear on here. I may not have written down panda. Is the biology of a panda that much different from a bear? Because I'm sure I've got, yeah, I've got bear here. So if you compare like panda, whether it's a red panda or a blue panda or a white panda or whatever, um, so panda just looks like a bear. The only thing that's differentiating it from it is color. Do we want? Do we look? Those of you who are patrons, do you want to have panda there? Do you feel like it's got enough different to to the the bear? So if that's the panda, and I type in here bear, does it look different enough? And your opinion from the panda. That's the bear. That's the panda. Bear. Panda. Colorization slightly different. Bear. Similar body type. Slightly different um, 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 nose. Different coloring. The ears. Are the ears different? The ears look slightly different. No, the ears look so different and so similar. If I put down panda, I'm putting a question mark beside it, okay? Because I feel like it's just another bear. And uh, panda. We don't have to be too desperate about just trying to fill up and get to 100. So, you know, it's all right if we don't, if it takes a little while to get there. Because we only we only have to do it once, and once it's done, it's done. Um, car. 
Caribou. Caribou? Is it? Oh, it's just a deer. It's a reindeer. It's literally a caribou is a reindeer, deer. We've got moose. I'm sure we've got moose and deer. And moose is just like another deer type, if you ask me. Um, and we've definitely got deer in here somewhere because I'm sure I put it. Yeah, there's deer right in front of me. Sitting in front of my eyeballs. Okay, let's keep moving on. That's a, uh, Did I just click on this one? I almost got... What the hell is that? Okay, all right. Each eye weighs more than their whole brain. It looks really strange. It kind of, I mean, it's a climbing, it kind of looks like a climbing monkey, but it's a, um, it's weird as. Okay, so maybe I add this. Maybe I add this. Um, T A R S I U. Yes, I think that's right. There it is. But it's not a monkey. It's not a koala bear. Its head is very different. Its legs are kind of like, they're kind of long, but you can see they're all squished up. It's a thing. Uh, we might add this. Let's add this on. I think that's different enough. Yeah, pandas. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Charles is like pandas beer. It's just a different color. Okay, so T. Uh, I'm probably going to take it off. Uh, T T T T T. See, that's T A R T A R T A R. Right in here. Trying to get them into alphabetical order so we don't have too many repeats. Which means I'm going to have to do a lot more work. Oh dear. Oh well. That's life. <laughs> uh, plenty of time. Plenty of time. The world will not end. Not today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> uh, tiger snake? No. Owl? No. Flies? Horse? We had horse already. I'm sure, sure we got pig and horse already. Pig and horse just seems like pretty obvious. Pig, yeah. And horse. If we haven't got a horse, we're doing something wrong. Oh! We don't have horse. I put down a house. Does any, does anybody know of a animal that is, looks like a house? <laughs> there we go. It's a horse. <laughs> right. So we didn't have horse on there, but now we do. A opossum. An opossum. Is there such a thing as an opossum? You want to put possum. We have possums here in New Zealand. Uh... An O possum is an O possum. Let me just go O possum. I think it's just possum, right? Oh, is it actually a thing? Oh, oh this is the thing that was had spiky bits all over it. An O possum. And then you have a possum, which just looks like what? Possum. No, that's not. There we go. Possum and possum. And opossum. So we'll just put... Oh, okay. Possum. Fine. I'll put possum on there. P for possum. Uh, I feel like it's just another type of raccoon, really. Possum and raccoon. Don't you? I know. I, I was thought like... Oh, we've got possum already. So we don't... Yeah, never mind. Moving on from that. Panda is not a bear. Okay, Fred. Educate me, educate me. Yes, that's the yeah, Brian. You're right. I feel like that um, um, Pterosaurus, ter whatever the heck it is, Pterosaurus. Yeah, it should have some sort of hypnotic ability or some way of like messing, messing with your brain or seeing through lead. Um, a panda is not a bear. We just call it panda bear because it looks like a bear. But there's where the similarities end. Appearance. So I'll put, I'll put down possum anyway. Opossum and a possum is the same sort of thing as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to leave that. Uh, good good try though. I know we've got termite, termite already because somebody had mentioned it before. Fine. Uh, panda's there. 
but if I find something better, I'm going to switch it out. Okay. Um, caterpillar. I'm pretty sure I had caterpillar and termite on the list. Caterpillar, termite, and termite. Why did I leave termite off? Tick. I put tick on here. Termite felt like it was just another insect. Is that right? I'm sure we've been back through this. Like, uh, it's been a, it's been a week. I should remember, right? Caterpillar. Yeah, caterpillars. All right. Moving on. Um, tetra. What's a tetra? That's a fish. Tetra's a fish. It's a snake, snake, lizard. What is this? Is this a dinosaur or something? I don't even know what that. Oh, is that a, is that a bird? Oh, yeah, it's a flying, it's a flying creature. It's a flying dinosaur. It is a flying dinosaur. The thacky wacky. Okay, all right. Um, Thornback Ray. I'm f pretty sure that'll be marine. Yeah, it's just an ant. Yeah, let's we'll leave that alone. Uh, turkey. Isn't it turkey? Isn't a turkey just another chicken? I don't know that we've got turkey on there, but it does feel like it's just another chicken. Let's have a look. Let's compare a little suckers. Chicken and turkey. Chicken. There's a chicken. And then we have turkey. Problem with turkeys, turkeys fly, don't they? I'm pretty sure turkeys fly. It's a flying creature. Chickens don't really fly very far, so I kind of left it off the flying creature list. Um, okay. Turkey animal. Try turkey animal. Let's try that. Turkey's a large bird. Genius. Da, da, da. North America, they are two extinct, uh, ex extinct species. Turkey. Um, it's a large bird native to North America. Turkey. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but does it fly? I think turkeys fly, don't they? Is it a bird or a chicken? To be in bird species. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the lynx. An up dog. Well, I haven't suggested, nobody suggested up dog, but because it probably was dog, right? Hello, Pale Rider, how are you doing? The Tritian Golem. <laughs> um, yeah, so if somebody can tell me, turkeys fly off the list, chickens fly, both tend to not fly far or high, they fly. To roost in trees. Turkeys fly, yes. Right, so, yeah. I mean, I left the chicken on there because I've never seen a chicken fly very far. They don't seem they don't seem to be able to fly very well. Um, and to be fair, I'd be easily willing to take ch chicken off there if I find something better. So let's, let's have a look at these suggestions that you've put forward. I don't know what an up dog is. Does it just look like another dog? An up dog? Um, okay, you got me. Well done, Charles. Up dog. <laughs> uh, 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 what about this one? The lynx. It's like a spray can, right? It's a cat. It's just another cat. We've got cats. We've got cat. We've got lion. We've got tiger. I mean, we've got bugger truckload of them um if you drive a if you drop a living turkey from an airplane it will survive right well that's good to know so the next time you guys go um taking your turkeys for a, a plane ride and you're worried that they won't survive if you throw them out because there's not enough parachutes 
you'll be all right thrush what am i do what i sick select thrush that's not gonna be it is this a dinosaur oh it's kind of like a saber-toothed tiger isn't it but not is it different enough it's kind of lo looks pretty whack uh tiberian spaniel that's tiffany tiffany isn't it we've got ape and gorilla we've got ape already i'm pretty sure uh i've we've got badger badgers there i'm, I'm look i'm honestly like badger was one of the first things that people were saying is like badger we're not gonna put honey badger it's a good thing I got. I don't have my friends, all my friends sitting in the some live chat. They'll be throwing all sorts of. We got to have the honey badger. Well, come on, Tiffany. No, it's a cat. Hello, Tiffany. Uh, bye, bye, Tiffany. And then moth. No, salamander, lizard, swallowtail. That's a cat. It, what's a titty? A, a ticky talky. Oh, it's a, it's a submer submergible marine creature. Okay. Um, tire track eel. What's an eel? It's in the water. What is this? Is this another dinosaur? Brontosaurus. I'm sure I put down Brontosaurus. Yeah, Brontosaurus is there. It's just another type of Brontosaurus. Um, a Toki. It's a dog. Toki, Toki, Toki. Tosa, Tosa, Tosa. It's a dog as well. Great. Uh, learning a lot about dogs today. Those of you who are uh, up for dogs. Uh, Taxodon. What's a Taxodon? what is that it looks like something that's extinct um tox odon toxodon toxodon is what a mammal it feels like it is a an ancestor of the um, rhino. It, it feels like a... Yeah, it's not really... There's not really much else going on with this little thing, so I don't think we should add it. Hyena just feels like another dog. Fox is another dog. Um, what's this one you've got here? Dun uh, Dungeons and Chronics. You've written down something, and I don't recognize it. Um, Capi... Bara. What's a capybara? Oh, it's a guinea pig. Capybara. I'm pretty sure I got a guinea pig on there. There we go. Guinea pig. Knew it. All right. So this toxodon, I don't think that's going to be that interesting as an extension of this. So we'll leave that alone. Hound, no. Frog, no. Swallow, no. Tree hopper. What's a tree hopper? Ooh. Tree hopper, color shaped tree hoppers helmets make them unique and visually stunning. Well, now I'm now I I need to know more. I should be taking a break. You realize this, people? <laughs> My fault, right? Just stop. Come back later. A tree hopper. What is this? Is this an insect of some kind? What does it look like? Tree hopper. Oh, it's bizarre as. It kind of looks like a thorn. There it is. Tree hopper. I don't think it flies, does it? Tree hoppers is a thorn bug. Um, a member of the Yake group of insects related to cicadas and leaf hoppers. But... Cicadas fly and this does not. I don't think this flies. Does it fly? Does anybody know? Does a tree hopper fly? Um, um, does this thing fly? I, I'm curious now. Tree hopper. I'm sure somebody knows the answer. Insect order. Do 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 do. If it just hops, 
that's fine. If it flies, yeah, I don't know. I think she goes. Um, a roach, co I think. I think cockroach. Oh, co I think cockroach is on here. I mean, cockroach is just another beetle, is it not? Is do you, do we really think that a cockroach is significantly different? I don't know that it is. Um, tree hopper. I'm not too sure about the tree hopper. Walking sticks. I, we've got a stick insect already. I'm pretty sure. But let's let's have a look at what you've said, said here. Uh, tree hopper. Flying roaches. Okay, so a tree hopper is basically a flying roach. Yeah, roaches fly. I thought so. Roaches fly. Um, terror. The. Degrades. Terror degrades. Holy shit. Um. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> where does. Where does this thing live? Is this a land thing? It's uh I mean you got my attention. Colloquially as the water the water bear or moss piglets are a eight legged segmented um, microscopic animal. What hey so clever. Microscopic animals are our next point of call, people. But it's a water bear. I think it lives in water, does it not? Um, Jim, did I call it a D, 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 D. We've got a tick. Yeah, microscopic organisms is, is a, it's a good idea. On me, on me. Okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've lost, I've lost it. Okay, so I can't tell where what it's in, a habitat. It's often found in lichens and moss, for example, for soaking moss. Oh, oh, I see. Soil, leaf, litter, marine. So they do both. Oh, oh, now we're in business. And it's it looks horrific. So we, we can. Let's grab it. You, you little sucker, you. You scary little shit. <laughs> here we go. Um, let's stick it in here. Let's go with that. Tar. Nice, nice one. Well done. Uh, a fossa? What's a fossa? That is a, uh, that is definitely a little bit different. You resubmit Wolverine, but he thinks it's a dog. I do. I do. I do think a Wolverine is just another dog. Okay. <laughs> um, my suggestion of star-nosed mole. We have mole already here, though, people. I'm sure we've got mole already. Oh, no, we don't. It's on the other list. Is this the land-based list? Okay. All right, so we had this discussion before, and we, we, were, like, we were going to have to put some of the subterranean stuff onto the land-based as well, because they they're on the land. So, um, okay. Mongoose mole, yeah, mole. So I don't have it there, but I'll put mole. Okay, all right. Are we happy about that? I've added that. Somebody's Dungeons and Crunch, you put this down. This is a suggestion. Let's see what that is. No, that's not what I want to look at right now. Um, the Star nosed mole. Mole is in borrowing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm star nosed mole. Jeez. Let's see. 
Um, I got distracted. Somebody had said something and I was trying to type it. Oh, here we go. Fossa. What? Just looks like any... Look, oh, yeah. It's just another cat, isn't it? This just looks like another cat. Literally looks like a cat. It's a cat. It's a fossa. It's a cat. All right. Okay. Okay, so this is this is where I am. I need to take a, a, a mole is a dog. Yeah, well, uh, you're probably right, Pale Rider. It probably is a dog. All right, let's have a look at where are we, we, we got with this, okay? So we're we're up to 79 animals, some of which we may have to ditch. So we're, we're doing all right. So it's not the end of the world. We, we, we'll, we will survive microscopic animals. Hashtag. Let's go microscopic. Microscopic animals. All right. Now I've put that in. I'm going to take a quick break because I just need to just empty the lizard and then I'll be back. Uh, and where's Arnold? Come on, Arnold. Get over here. All right. Here we go. Arnold, you do the thing. I'll be back in less than five. Five minutes or less. Fred, that looks interesting. What have you What have you cooked up here? Let's have a look. I'm coming back. To have a look and see what you've uh, come up with in terms of ideas. Okay, back I come. Now I would drink this water, but something has dropped inside. I have got a friend. Thanks. Great protein um <clears throat> i like to drink my oh come here get out of here all right okay so sorry people there are things falling in my drink and um yeah i'm not really i don't really want to drink them if i can help it <laughs> with this ongoing discussion of what is or isn't a dog or a cat or beetle i remember remind rem reminded of the exchange between defining man <laughs> Charles yeah, yeah I, I get it I get it I get it I get it let me just look up what um, 
it's so many things just look so similar. So if we put them down, it's just it's not that interesting. Here we go. What is this? It's a flag. Elate. What's a flag late? Good lord. A Mobus. Ah, actually, that may have just that may have given us something that's. They live in all sorts of things, don't they? Don't they? I'm sure they do. Is a cell of or organism with one or more whip-like appendages called a flagella. Okay. Uh, motion. Um, construction. Okay, so this this might be another one we're adding on. Um, what do they live in? They live inside other organisms, don't they? Am I correct? Is that correct? That's that's what it is, isn't it? They live inside other organisms. Okay. I think you sold me on that one. Okay, so this is um, all right. That was that was interesting. If e if we don't have anything on an if right now. Oh, we got ferret. So so that's um, yeah. That's that's fine. Let's put this in here. Flag late. All right. The parasites. Yeah, they they but they live everything. They they live in. They can live in um, in water. They can live in the ocean. They can live inside the the you know the liquid of a um, body. They can live in. So they don't even have to be in liquid so much, do they? Um, as far as I can tell, they can they can be in your food. You can ingest them. So it's a it's a it's a very good idea. Okay, so let's go with Amobus. I think that's right. Um, this is multicellular. This is different again, isn't it? They live in everything, don't they? I'm pretty sure. If it's got a tail, it's a dog. Correct. It's a dog. <laughs> uh, dear. And then my, it's a microscopic dog. Okay. Amobus. Shape, nutrition, diet, size. I know that they tend to um, to live in um, fluid most of the time within other organisms. So it's actually it actually would fit under all of them, would it not? I'm a, so we can go this one here. Let's uh, let's add that into there. That's um that's pushing our number up a bit. Let's go here, right there. Paste, paste. Okay. <laughs> you guys are making jokes about that. Oh, how do I get ant, ant 
It's supposed to be ant. We've got ant. Okay, ant. Right, what was I doing here? Uh, we were... <laughs> we were trying to get this list somewhere. I was, I was, I got the tree hopper and I got distracted. Um, no, we've got badger, we've got cat. Pretty sure I had centipede already. Did I not have centipede on this? We can probably add centipede as well. We've got centipede. That's fine. Centipede. Uh, no. Uh, chipmunk. Chipmunk. I think I'm pretty. We had chipmunk. Clam, no, it's a yeah, chipmunk. I think we had chipmunk already. Chipmunk, yes. So we ported over a lot of stuff already that was on that list. Cockroach, yeah, uh, burrows, but it's also a um, it's a flying little shit, so it's not going on land. Uh, crab, we had crab, no, we got that already. Earwig, oh, we had earwig before. Oh, that's on this list. We could probably add earwig. Somebody was saying something. There's a, there's a, you know, silverfish earwig. They're pretty much the same, aren't they? Earwig. There's going to be ear, something like that. Earwig. Okay. All right. Uh, earwig. Yeah, yeah. So you you make a good point there, um, Fred. Um, Fred. Kinds, thousands of millions of kinds. There are. There's a brain-eating one, native to USA, about three deaths a year. Okay, that sounds lovely. Exactly what we want. Um, earwig. <laughs> uh, flea. Copy. I think we got um, flea is burrowing, but it's also on land. I know because we had enough of them around. Flea. Flee me, flee me. No, no, I'm not a flea. There we go. Flee. There we go. Flee. All right. You're going to say, Fred, you won't accept all the different dogs and cats and so forth that I've been, we've been suggesting, but you're going to take these? Really? Really? Groundhog. God. I don't know why I put groundhog on there. Um, Kingfisher. King how did I wind up with Kingfisher on there? It's because they burrow, don't they? That's why they burrow into the ground. No. Um, we've got Mole. I'm pretty sure we had Mouse already. Moose, Mouse. No, we don't have Mouse. Oh, oh no, we have Mouse. There's Mouse. It's in the land one. Mouse. Mouse is there. Mudfish, no. Otter. Otter? No, I don't think so. I'm not really tempting to... Yeah. Of the amoeba, okay. The brain-eating amoeba are terrifying. Can't do anything to stop it once you know. Ooh, lovely. Okay, single have a um, have legs like a microscope. Single cell millipedes in water. Silicates. Yeah, yeah. Groundhog is a pig. Exactly. You said it. Yeah, it's a dog. Exactly. <laughs> um, let's let's keep leaps. Let's keep going. <laughs> Get there. Mole fish. Um, pangalong. Why did I have pangalong here? It's because they burrowed, eh? But a pangalong is something we could probably chuck in there because if I remember the pangalong. Fuck it. Here we go. P. Oh, we had penguin already. Pangalong. Right, so, pretty sure pangalong is... Spends a lot of time on land, so we can probably just truck that little sucker in there. Paste. Yeah, pangalongs on there. Let's do that. All right. 
Um, squirrel is dog. Yeah, squirrel's a dog. Take that one off as well. Um, looks a little bit different to a dog. Anyway, looks pretty different to a dog, actually. Uh, platypus. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like a platypus on land doesn't make any sense. Polar bear. We have polar bear. Oh, that's a burrow. That's why we put that there, didn't we? We got bear. We got panda. Um, no, I don't want to put it on there. Um, rabbit. Did we have rabbit on the other one? I can't remember. I'm sure we did. Digs holes. I'm sure we had rabbit on the land one. Did we not put rabbit on here? On the land one? No, we didn't put rabbit here. Oh, it's a good thing I did this. We're actually getting somewhere now. Rabbit. Rabbit. Fred. Rabbit. There we go. Put the rabbit on, Fred. There we go. There we go. Rabbit's on. Elephant is a long-nosed dog. Damn, I have to take the elephant off now. Are you telling me? Elephant? Oh, we've got elephant on there. That'll have to come off. Giraffe is basically a long <laughs> Well, Yeah, if, if it's fluffy and it's got a tail, it's dog. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Okay, so... Uh, rabbit. Let's stick a rabbit in there. Um, all right. Keep moving, Fred. Keep moving. Scorpion. Shrimp. No, I'm not putting shrimp in there. We've got snake already. We've already got squirrel already. Um, I'm pretty sure we had scorpion. Did we not write scorpion on there? I'm sure we did. We were talking about it. Yeah, we did. We just put scorpion on there. And some other thing that looked, kind of looked like a scorpion, but not quite like a scorpion. Uh, sp sure, spider. Oh, termite. Termites are burrowing, but somebody had said, didn't you guys say termite, termite before? Termite, squirrel, termite, spider, termite, squirrel, spider, termite, squirrel, spider, termite, termite. The brain's moving slow today. It's winding up. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. That's right, rabbits so are let us eating um, doggy. Yep. Uh, uh, did here make it a list? Did, did, did here add it to the list of rabbits? Yes, it did. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Have you ever seen a white bunny eating strawberries? Yes, I've seen them eating everything. Dreaded Vorpal bunnies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a rabbit. When I go to work, there are rabbits in the fields right next to where I work. And they have a ball. They have a great time. Tortoise. Did we stick tortoise on here? I'm not going to stick toad on there because I don't feel like... Do toads really spend that much time on the land? I feel like it's it's getting silly now. I feel like I'm getting silly now. It's entirely possible I'm getting silly now. I can stick wetter on there. That would work. Tortoise. Is tortoise on here? Yes, it is on here, Fred. So we don't need to stick it on. Urchin is not going on. Wasp is not going on. Weasel and Weta. Weasel, Weta, and Wombat. Woodlice. Worm. All right, I'm sticking all of these on here. Did I do it? Did I press the button? Yeah, I did. Okay. Weasel, 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 weasel. Weasel. Okay, so um, around about here, no, there, somewhere, somewhere, around about somewhere, uh, we stick this. Wood lice, wood something, weasel, wetter, wombat, wood lice, worm, wolf. Okay. Okay, all right. Um, it's it's happening. Eight more to go, which sounds easy, but it's never never that easy because um, tree hoppers fly, so we're not sticking tree hoppers on there. Uh, so let's go back to tree hopper, and if I can find where I yeah tree hopper no it's a fish trout nor fish um, a tuft cord what. 
That's a corgi. That's a dog. Tuna. That's fish. Vulture. Flies. Frog. No. Moth. No. This is another dinosaur. It's it's a swimming dinosaur. We'll come back to you some other day. <laughs> um, T T T T T. Uh, now back to the top of this. Scorpion. No. What's a taken? I have been taken by the taken. 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 It is a. What is it? It's a cow. Or a deer. A taken. Taken. A uh, tang. It's a fish. A tangy fish. Tangy fish. Uh, tang. Come on. Get it. Uh, what is this? A ta ta what's a tapur? Tapur? What the? What is that? They existed for more than 30 million years on Earth, and then they died. That's why I haven't seen one. Enjoy your... Got to jump off. No problem, Sam and Brian. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Jeez, I probably... I didn't I forget. I think you're a patron. I didn't say anything. Sorry, buddy. Ah, blimey. Um, my brain is trying to work overtime to get this, uh, this sorted out, so like... It almost feels like a pig, but it isn't a pig, is it? That's a pig. Down the bottom there, that's a pig. But that's not a pig. That's... Who knows what that is? Anyway, let's um, let's do a little um, research. Let's do a little research, uh, because I haven't seen this thing before. Tapu. Tapu? There it is. What is it? Better not say it's a pig. Because if it's a pig, it's it's off. Is it a pig? It's got a really funny snouty thing going on there. A dodo. Are you are you referring to me? It's a dog. It's topaz a uh, living fossil. They. Been around since, okay, have survival waves of extinction, um, extinction of other animals, South America. Um, animals are 300 pounds, or have most notable uh, prehensile nose, okay, is a container of species. Okay, so I'm herbivore mammal family, similar in shape to a pig. But with a prehensile nose trunk. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't like it that much. I don't like the option that much. <laughs> um, uh, here we go. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not convinced. There's a lot of question marks here. You can see how, how definitively I've figured things out. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, short-nosed elephant too. Yeah, it feels like a short-nosed elephant. Like, all right, so this is this is a dinosaur, isn't it? It is. It's just another T-Rex. I'm pretty sure i got a Tyrannosaurus Rex on here. Yeah, we've got it. It's a T-Rex. Just called something else. Um, Tasmanian Devil. I'm pretty sure. Didn't we have the Tasmanian Devil already? Frogmouth, Frogmouth. Is it's a frog? Is it a tawny Frogmouth? Tawny Frogmouth camouflage hide in plain sight. A tawny Frogmouth. I am a little lost. I'm. It's a. It's an owl, right? Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure it's an owl. An owl's fly. But from the picture, it is, it's a flying thing. No. Tawny owl. Frogmouth. Go away. Uh, chinchilla. Chinchilla. It's a dog. It's a teacup. <laughs> Pour it like a little teacup. Yeah, it's just, it's just a T-Rex here. Yeah. I thought it was. Um, poodle, no. Terrier, no. No, we've got horses, snakes. Terrier, no, got no. Snake, 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 snake. Um, a Thai Ridgeback. What's a Thai Ridgeback? 
It's a dog. Of course it is. They're all dogs. Um, Tyrick is <laughs> a dinosaur of some kind. Holy sh... Okay. All right. <laughs> what the heck is that? Um, I think we've scored one. I think that's definitely gone on the list. I don't know how to pronounce it or spell it or anything like that. My eyes are shite. A thea... The... Zino... Saurus? Zinosaurus? Good lord. All right. It's like a cannibalistic... Doesn't fly turkey. Whew, man. It's not quite a rap raptor. It definitely looks a little different to that. Let's stick it on. Let's stick it on. Where's, where's the T's? T H T A T H T A T H T A T H T H T H T I H I. Yeah, there we go. You mother. Okay. This is going to be a running gag now on future streams, isn't it? Oh, oh, look. How many running gags have you guys been playing with me um, over the over the period of time that you've been here? I know there's more to come. Um, why do I feel like there's something else I had? There's something percolating in my mind for a second there and just disappeared. Don't know why. Oh, 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 uh, what, what? No. They fly. Nope. The, now where is it? Where's this, this sucker that I just grabbed and, um, there you go. There we go. Thorny devil. What's a thorny devil? Does anybody know what a thorny devil is? Is this basically just a very spiky lizard? Thorny Devil. Um, a Thorny Devil is known commonly as a Mountain Devil, Thorny Lizard, Thorny Dragon, and mol Molich. Species of Lizard. Well. Well, hell, hell, hell. It's a Lizard that doesn't look like a Lizard. The thorny devil kind of looks like a great huge clump of Lego. <laughs> you know, the thing you stand on and go and just shout and paint thorny devil. Fine, thorny devil. Um, so if you guys haven't figured out what's going on right now, I'm just doing stuff now. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> clearly, clearly that, look. It's a lizard covered in thorns. I realize I'm get, I'm getting to the point where I don't care anymore, which my suggestion is, is just write silly stuff in the comments right now, because I'm just writing stuff down. I just want to get it done. It's a thorn. It's a, it's a, it's a spiky scaled dog lizard. Exactly. It's a horny. <laughs> there you go. You guys have got it. Just do that. And I'm six. Fucking six left to go. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thorny devil. I don't know what. That, it's got to be a dinosaur, right? It's a cat. It's just a big cat. Everything's a cat. Um, Ty fox, terror, tiger. No, I'm pretty sure I got cats coming at me. Um, what is this? Is this a tiger? Tiger shark. Tiger, caterpillar, no, uh, rattlesnake, no, beetle, no, toad, fish, no, a uh, torn jack. What's a torn jack? It's a dog. Of course it's a, t it's, well, they're all dogs. Torn jack. T, 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 torn jack. Token. It's got, there's be another dog, right? Can we have a wolverine now? I don't know. 
I'm going to fight that one. It's a blooming fish. I pressed the one that said toad fish. It should be obvious that it's a toad fish. It's this one I was trying to press. It's a freaking... I should have known that one. Should be obvious to me. Um, spider, kangaroo. We've got kang... Don't, I'm sure we had kangaroo before. Tree, tennisai, bridle. What is... The blah, 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 blah. Um, a tits mouse. Really? No, it's a dog. Of course it's a dog. Bridle. Uh, Trudon. Trodon. Trodon? What is a Trodon? Okay, now I'm curious. Uh, what's it? Wounded mouth, Greek name, describes serrated teeth. Is that just a really um, scary looking um, flight, flightless bird or dinosaur? Uh, and it's a dinosaur and it kind of just looks like a small velociraptor okay so forget about it uh, no trodon trodon no 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 tc fly no it's a fly it's its mouse it probably looks like a mouse no it's a it's not a it's not a male mouse it is a bird ah uh a tree dog. Yeah, Ooh, everything's a dog. It's Look, it's a flying dog. <laughs> um, Turkish Angora. Is that sheep? No, it's a cat. Of course it's a cat. Um, turtles. No, it swims. Caterpillar. No, T-Rex. We've got that already. Uh, it's a fish. Tumane. Tumarn. Tumarn. Tum... It's a... It's a... That's a... A monkey. Gecko. Tarantula, no, it's spider. Torpon, what's a torpon? It's a fish. Oh, come on, don't do that to me. You're making it harder. Tasmanian tiger, no. It's a bee, no. Teacup Maltese. Hamster, no, we're not doing that one. Bird. Under you, so you accidentally, accidentally um, step on it and give it an excuse to shred you, leaving you. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Thanks you, thank you. I, I appreciate that information. It's a dog. Of course, it is a dog. Maltese, um, terrier, Maltese, hamster. No, um, a tenric. Is that a, it's another dog? No, no. It's a wacky looking something. I. Uh, Tenric, Tenric, Tenric. Feels like a mole. Um, anyway, what do we got here? Terrier, no, bird, no, don't, no, no, no. Healer. Texas Healer, is that a dog too? It is a dog. Of course it is. This is the list of dogs. Um, snake. I don't know what this is. That's a swimming thing. Leave that alone. Um, they're a pod. That is a, what is it? Had feathers, but have and so some modern birds. It just looks it looks like a Velociraptor to me. No, uh, Carnifex. What's a Carnifex? Oh, a Carnifex is another Carnifex, a large carnivorous mammal in Australia. Carnifex. Ba ba ba. Hedgehog. I'm, did I not have hedgehog? I'm sure I had hedgehog. I'm sure I had hedgehog. Uh, Carnifex. Tick. We got tick. Beetle. Snake. No. Trout. No. Python. And uh, tribor. Oh, that's a snake, isn't it? Yeah, it's a snake. Of course it was. Um, I knew that one. Um, horn. Horn worm. I, I'm pretty sure. Do we have worm? I think we got worm now. Tortoise. We've got that. Uh, Toe. Toe. Tohe. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. It's a caterpillar. Tohe. Tohe. Tortoise. Tohe. That one there. It's a bird. Of course it's a bird. Um, Tohe. Toy poodle. It's a poodle. Cricket. Not doing that. Snake. Uh, tree creeper. It's a tree creeper. It's a bird. Of course it's a bird. Um, horn worm is a caterpillar. Okay, all right, yeah. I, th I thought it... I'm learning a lot. Uh, biology is... Uh, it, it was not my... Look, I, I did my studies in psychology, philosophy, and mathematics. Or actually, should I say psychology and mathematics and then philosophy. 
Tree Creeper, no. Tree Walking Con Hound. What? Oh, it's a hound. This just walks. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a bird. Tortara is a lizard. Uh, a tully monster. What's a tully monster? Oh, okay. That's a swimming thing. No, don't do that again. Oh, you did it so str oh, frustrating. Frustrating. Turkey, no. Uh, Turnspit, it's a dog. Of course, it's a life is a dog. Uh, this is, I don't know, is this a dinosaur or something? It's a squid. It's a squid uh, and a snake. Okay, so I've done all of T. So we have done from T to Z of animals. And how many do we have left to go? About five. Five land-based animals. And I ref refuse to put... Oh, what's this? The Demox... The Demoxa Tully Monster Swims. Okay, so let me just type this in here. Um, those of you who are putting up with me right now, you're doing well. Demodex. What is that? It's my eyeball, your eyeball, tiny mites. Oh, it's a tiny mite that live near the hair follicles. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Ugh. It's like, um, oh, she's nice and disgusting. It looks weird. It's like a cross between a... It's not a. It's not like an insect because it's got four legs, and then it's got like a really long bum. Oh, I gotta put it on. Oh, it's just look at it. It's horrible. All right, well done. You you made me vomit. That was a pretty nasty one. Let's do. Let's stick it on, shall we? <laughs> ah, dear. That's a. It comes out of your eye. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, I'm learning far too much about biology and other animals right now. And as a result of this, um, I'm going to obviously be torturing everybody else who's in here. You got to just put up with it. <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's stick this thing in because that is just awful. All right, so that makes uh, four more to go. Hello, Shiner81. How are you doing? Just arrived. Uh, what have I walked into? Oh, you wouldn't believe um the 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 ongoing jokes my frustr I, I just are refusing to put anything that looks like a dog cat uh or another animal onto this list uh, and uh so they're they're look they're searching for something and they're finding some really horrible things they're doing very well <laughs> and it is i'm out of time i'm out of time again we've got four more to go well next time four more to go we're moving on to marine i think we'll do some swimming stuff um, I feel like swimming stuff is going to be so much easier. Flying creatures, I just, I can see that being a problem. Flying insects, flying birds, flying dinosaurs, flying this and flying that. Um, we're, we're defining all life on earth based on either Fred calls it a dog. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's true. Let's, let's just go with that. If I think it's a dog, it's a dog. And that is definitely not a dog. That is a terrifying creature. And, um, yeah. Do we consider it a land-based creature? It's like it's it's a mite. Hair follicles. Humans found in facial hair. So this is the problem. When you find creatures that can live inside another creature that lives, and that's on the land, it's kind of... It's a it's a good bet that you, 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 you're going to score. Um... Man, okay, all right. That was so horrible. That's right. A mouse is a dog because yeah, squirrels, flying squirrels, flying creature, can't put them on. Okay, all right. So now that you've tolerated this, so we're going to be going to S next time, next week. I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I should be going to work. I'm sitting here thinking. Thinking a lot. 
not a lot lot but a little bit of a lot because because i can see this 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 is gonna did i put that down no did i put it down tell me Yes, I did. Oh, I knew I, I was like, I thought, oh, there's another one. Okay, all right. Never mind. Okay, so I'm, I, I'm clearly, I've gone insane doing this. <laughs> I've gone insane. It's like, how can I get enough different animals that have enough different things on them so that we don't wind up with everything looking like a dog, a cat, or a, um, a mouse, basically. And it's like, it's not so easy to do. <laughs> human did i not did i leave human off the list don't tell me i left human off the list i don't, I don't believe it i don't think i left i didn't i don't i didn't leave that on off the list did i no i was humans there humans there okay like all right so what's happening tomorrow tomorrow it's character building people character building um not building my character my character's a mess but <laughs> we're building the alchemist tomorrow for pathfinder second Ed edition i am not ready to build a beck me character on, on a live stream and, and and instruct you on that process because i struggled last time i two hours i made two characters but that's because wally dm was in the chat and it's the only way i got through that so yeah, character building for tomorrow is uh, is definitely going to be something I think I can manage using a piece of software. <laughs> and that's going to be the Pathfinder Wanderer's Guide because that's just going to be so much easier. I want to end this poll. Let's see what this poll says. Um, we've been doing golems today. Have you been... Uh, ha have there been golems in your adventures uh, Adventures you run or play? Yes, 71%. No, 28%. Not sure, zero. I'm glad you know, you remember that one. Not just watching, zero. Good, 14 votes. Wonderful. I mean, if every monster turned out like looking like a dog and a cat, it would be terrorizing the PCs, but actually increasing the um, friendly kitten. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All right, okay, so <laughs> I've got to go uh <laughs> this has been this has been an experience as all of you are aware who are still here anyway <laughs> thank you for showing up people thank you for watching thank you for taking part in um what is definitely proving to be um fred's insanity like who would have thought making 100 land animals that are fairly different in nature and what they look like is actually quite difficult. I would have never have guessed that would be possible, but apparently it is. Um, so thank you to my patrons who support me every week so I can keep doing this nonsense. And <laughs> you're going to have to wait for Nutella. Uh, thank you for taking part in the poll. Thank you for watching. If you're re-watching, thank you for doing that. Thank you for everybody who's been in the chat. I'm not going to go over all your names because you know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. And it'll just incite another um, set of dog and cat jokes. So <laughs> wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. And sure, keep bringing the cat and dog jokes. It's fine. I like dogs. <laughs>